Rapper Lil Kim bursted onto the scene in the 90s as a protege of the notorious B.I.G. But after his unfortunate and untimely death, Kim went from living in the late rapper's shadow to a full-blown music and fashion icon who became rap's first fashion muse. Long before it was trendy to mock her appearance on social media, there was a time in history when Lil' Kim was the most visible female rapper out. And years before Lady Gaga came around, everybody watched award shows just to see what Lil' Kim wore. The rapper was often seen around town hanging with top designers like Marc Jacobs, Donatella Versace, and Giorgio Armani. She was sitting front row of couture shows, wearing one-of-a-kind pieces, and attending elite events that hip-hop artists were rarely invited to. Nobody expected to see a young Brooklyn, New York native transcend hip-hop and serve up luxury, glamour, campy high fashion, sex appeal, and bars simultaneously. But Kim's signature aesthetic had a lasting impact on not just female rap, but pop culture as a whole. Her approach is what set her apart from her peers and other female rappers who came before her. She serves as the originator of a lot of hair and fashion trends that are popular today. There was always a connection between hip hop and fashion, but the focus was mainly on urban streetwear. When Lil' Kim hit the scene, high fashion and haute couture finally made their crossover with the hyper-masculine genre. Her longtime friend and stylist Misa Hilton is also to credit for enhancing her image. She was the brains behind most of Kim's iconic looks. You guys know that I love sharing inside looks and secrets of some of the most monumental moments in black pop culture history. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look back at Lil' Kim's most recognized outfits and looks, and I will also be giving you guys the backstories on how they came together. Lil' Kim is a character that everyone knows me for my career. You know, that's the, the name that I use to make my money and my livelihood. But at the same time, Little Kim is a big part of Kimberly Jones. And Kimberly Jones is a little bit more closed. And I think my fans really can see both sides, which is a cool thing. You know, but you know they don't. I don't they don't know everything about Kimberly Jones. I have um, bigger goals, and I want to be even larger than this. But I'm happy that my career is moving. It's definitely moving, and I I can see the progression, and um, it's exciting, and I'm happy for that to be finally moving. Lil Kim made her solo debut in 1996 with her studio album Hardcore. Her provocative and braggadocious lyrics earned the album a Grammy nomination, and she became the first female rap artist with three consecutive number one singles on Billboard's Rap Songs chart. On the iconic hardcore album package shoot, Kim squats down while wearing a Patricia Field two-piece bikini and sheer duster with feathers. Everything about the album, from her raunchy persona to her bold fashion looks, set the tone for her career, especially when she dropped the video for Crush On You in 1997. The music video was directed by Lance Un Rivera, and he was inspired by the Emerald City scenes from the 1978 musical The Wiz. He wanted Kim's creative team to do monochromatic color scenes. Misa Hilton came up with the looks for the video, while makeup artist Zynga matched the makeup with each outfit. Zynga went with matching lipstick with most of the looks, but when it came to the blue look, she gave her a neutral lipstick topped with glitter from the beauty supply store. Misa and Kim decided to match her hair with the outfits, and all colored wigs in the video were made by Eugene Davis. The fur coats worn by Kim in the video were designed by the late Hector Extravaganza a legendary Puerto Rican performer in the New York ballroom scene. He was one of the founders of the primarily Latin ballroom house, the House of Extravaganza. He went on to work as a fashion stylist and later served as a consultant on the FX television drama series, Pose. Hector also designed other mink coats for Kim, including the one she wore in her No Time music video. And that's pretty much the creative process behind the video that catapulted Lil' Kim to mainstream success. I want diamonds, buy me diamonds, they're my best friend. And he's working with the dream subject, which is, um, you know, the, this uh, really hot performer named Lil' Kim. She's the boss. She's brilliant. There's no other woman to photograph that's the kind of picture we're doing. The whole thing is to give diamonds, um, 
sort of a, a new look. And this little bauble sells at H. Stern for about $180,000. Do what you gotta do to get the money. <laughs> no. I use these snapshot ones, and I just like the quality. It just has a kind of lo-fi, kind of amateur snapshot look, which I like. Diamonds are definitely a girl's best friend. They are your best friend. They are your boyfriend. They are your mother. <laughs> they are everything. I love them. After the success of Hardcore, Kim quickly found major success in many different realms of entertainment. She was being embraced by both the hip-hop and fashion worlds. In 1998, Lil' Kim signed with Wilhelmina Models, and before you knew it, she was the face of many companies like Iceberg Jeans, Candies, and MAC Cosmetics. She was constantly sporting luxury designer fashion on red carpets and became known for her head-to-toe monochromatic looks and logo-branded fashion and hairstyles. And with a Dream Team glam squad consisting of Misa Hilton, Zynga, and hairstylist Dion Alexander elevating her image, the fashion scene was going nuts for Kim. Kim was being labeled the Black Madonna for being a risk-taker and pushing boundaries as far as music and fashion is concerned. Her signature aesthetic was inspired by LGBT icons and drag queens like RuPaul. The year 1999 is when Lil' Kim really rose to popularity and left her stamp on pop culture forever. Looking great, baby. Let's see right here, yeah. This way? Makeup artist Zynga had a friendship with famed pop art photographer David LaChapelle, which then evolved into a creative business partnership. David photographed Kim for his new photographs exhibit at the Tony Shafrazi Gallery in New York. In the portrait named Lil' Kim Luxury Item, Kim is nude and covered in Louis Vuitton logo print. Zynga and David were inspired by Dapper Dan's famous LV logo jackets, so they had two assistants airbrush the logo all over her body using stencils, which took about six hours. Speaking with Vice, David LaChapelle said, When I did that image, it was about the skin as a luxury item. I was taking cues from Harlem designer Dapper Dan. Logos hadn't come back yet. That happened a season or two later. I was questioning this idea of materialism. That was a bit of an outsider opinion since I was working in fashion." End quote. Kim had already made plans to use the image for either an album cover or for a Queens-based magazine publication. But when the then editor of Interview Magazine, Ingrid Sishi, walked into the gallery and saw it, she demanded it for the magazine. It took a lot of convincing Kim. But in the end, the portrait landed on the cover of Interview Magazine. But the luxury fashion brand slapped them with a cease and desist and landed ownership of an edition of the photo. That year, Kim also attended the Met Gala as a guest of Donatella Versace, the first female rapper ever invited to the event. The theme that year was rock style, and Kim had developed a good relationship with Versace. She was dressed in a head-to-toe pink ensemble showcasing pieces from Versace's Haute Couture Fall Winter 1999-2000 collection. The look was made up of hot pants, a one-of-a-kind fur coat, and pastel python boots straight from the runway. Speaking with Vogue magazine, she said, Donatella is my girl. We've loved each other from the moment we first saw each other. At the Met, you're a designer's muse, and she loved the fact that I have fun in her clothes. Versace was one of my favorite designers. She knew that and would always create things tailor-made just for me. The mink coat was an original. You won't find it anywhere. I've never seen it in stores. The only issue is the boots were four sizes too big for Kim, and they had already discussed other styling options like stilettos. That, those boots right there were a size eight. Okay, do the math. I, I wore a size four and a half at that time. And Donatella wanted me to have them because they were the only pair they were off the oh. runway. So I was like, well, I guess I'll have me a size eight today. Oh and, then, and then the first people I see at the dinner is Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston. And Barbie goes, what's up, girl? Damn, I didn't know your feet was that big. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, Kim finished off the look with a matching pink and blonde wig paired with the matching makeup. 
My hairstylist and makeup artist would always get a sneak peek of my outfits. At the time, a woman named Dion was doing my makeup and she was like family. She'd come to my house and stay overnight until she finished because she wanted everything perfect. She decided that we should do more than one color to coordinate with the outfit. Light pink, baby pink, and a few strands of blonde. She always nailed it. End quote. Now let's get into Kim's most iconic look to date. In September 1999, Lil' Kim attended MTV's Video Music Awards and the one-breasted purple jumpsuit she wore not only went down in VMA history, but completely became a major moment in pop culture for so many reasons. Jaws dropped when she walked the red carpet and Diana Ross played with her boob live on national television while presenting. Hanging out with Lil' Kim who pulled out all the stops tonight. Okay, did you have to like work yourself up to this? Or were you like, yeah, I'll wear that? I was like, yeah, I'll wear that. Did somebody make this for you? Yes, I have it's a amazing. stylist. amazing. Yeah, my stylist, her name is Misa. She's actually here today. She's standing over there, she has a cowboy hat. Do you guys, and do you guys get a shot of this? This is like. What came in second tonight? Because this is obviously, <laughs> what, what didn't make the cut? <laughs> That's a new one. I don't know what. I can't even, I don't know. Around the world. That was the moment that Kim really solidified herself as a global fashion icon. The original diva of R&B, Ms. Diana Ross. And then when Diana came out and she touched her boob, it just took it to a whole nother level. I was like, oh my God, don't knock the pasty off Diana, please. It's actually a little known fact that Missy Elliott sort of came up with the idea for the look. Kim's longtime friend and stylist Misa made the entire jumpsuit from scratch and created a nipple pasty out of leftover fabric. She told Fader, Missy Elliott had an idea that inspired me to create it. We were hanging out, kicking it, and talking about fashion and music, and she told me, if I was Kim, I would always just have one titty out and be like, F it. And I was like, hmm, interesting. So I tucked that in my memory bank, and the next big event that we had was the MTV Awards. So I pulled that inspiration out and brought it to life. I used Indian bridal fabric and had it custom made and collaborated with the Glam Squad. So we decided to keep it going with the colorful wig. Before that, we'd been doing a lot of primary colors, so we decided to try out the pastels. And we did the lavender wig with the lavender one-piece suit with the titty out, end quote. I'm on my way to the city. I have a fitting for my outfit for MTV. I am so excited. Ah, I'm gonna be beautiful till tomorrow. This is my beautiful stylist, Rosa. <laughs> and that's little Justin. Uh -huh. Puppy Dickie. <laughs> And then what I am going to be wearing for the next It's not finished yet, though. It's not finished. I mean, don't get the shoes because I think you would really be really mad at my stylist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really focused. Moving on to the wig, it wasn't actually meant to go along with Kim's ongoing monochromatic style. Hairstylist Dion Alexander created a platinum blonde wig to go along with the jumpsuit. However, when she added lavender to achieve the silvery hue, it ended up completely turning the wig purple. But it worked out well with the look. And that's the story about the creation of Kim's iconic VMA ensemble. After the year 1999, Lil' Kim completely transformed into a pop culture icon and was everywhere. She developed close friendships with luxury designers, she did back-to-back -back high fashion shoots, and people were always anticipating her appearance at high-profile events just to see what she wore. Designers were desperate to dress Lil' Kim. Some of them even used her as inspiration for collections. Kim even walked the runway for fat fashions. Uh, the lingerie collection was really great. I felt like a lot of it was based around what I already do and what I've done. And you know, that's great so that I can have an impact and be very, you know, noticeable in my style. We are ready to party. Let it snow! Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Let it snow.
Whether we down the slopes or on the streets We got every color fleece, man, we so unique When it's cold outside, no, it's still all good Little Kim gon' keep it hot in the old neighborhood Neighborhood all the hotties want hoodies, just nineteen fifty. You're in the hood now, baby. She graced the covers of dozens of magazines and was photographed by some of the industry's leading photographers, including many shoots with David LaChapelle, who she became close friends with. He photographed the artwork for her notorious K.I.M. sophomore album. For the album package, she wore Gucci by Tom Ford beaded denim pants with a feathered hem from the spring 1999 collection with the words Notorious K.I.M. fake tattooed on her abdomen. For the music videos, Kim went full-blown luxury black Barbie, wearing numerous high fashion ensembles and eccentric wigs. While Misa is due a lot of credit for pulling together majority of Kim's fashion looks, Kim still had her own distinct style, and her team crafted all of her looks around it. A lot of the designer outfits Kim wore to public events were actually her own clothes that she purchased. She was often seen in Christian Dior, Betsy Johnson, Fendi, and Jean-Paul Gaultier. Kim was a big fan of Chanel and styled herself in her own clothes for Missy's I Can't Stand the Rain music video. And the red biker outfits she rocked at the 2002 Grammy Awards were also her clothes. Since we're on the topic of Chanel, let's discuss her innovative designer logo wigs. In 2001, Lil' Kim started popping out with her most unusual wigs yet. In January that year, she attended the Versace Spring 2001 Couture Show in Paris, sporting a blonde wig with the Versace Greek keys going in four directions. Ooh, look at y'all. That hairdo is right. I'm feeling the hairdo. Open it up wider. Let me make sure, because I can't have her looking crazy, because the hairdo is nuts. That one looks a little golden to me, but I like. This one looks golden? That one looks golden. I know. I wish I had the other one. What you mean? Older, like. A little darker than the other. Mm -hmm. Look good. Look, look at my girls. I'm oh, cursing, Kim. Today's a good day. You cursing? Woo! All right. Is it? Does it? How does it look down here? In the back? Mhm. Mm you want to see? I can flip around the camera. You can look at yourself. Yeah. The wig was designed by none other than Dion Alexander. She created a stencil for the design and used a gold magic sharpie to fill it in. For complex, Dion said, somebody called me from Europe and was like, yo, that's all people are talking about is this wig. I just remember the voice message Kim sent me because she freaking loved this wig. She was like, oh my God, Dee Dee, I love this. I kept that message on my machine for the longest, end quote. Dion is responsible for giving her clients the trendiest hairstyles of the 90s that are still referenced till this day. Her clients included Mary J. Blige, Lauren Hill, Missy Elliott, Iman, Faith Evans, Lil Mo, and Aretha Franklin. But Dion's most recognizable work is the wigs she made for Kim. She sourced most of her wigs in New York and mainly went for blonde ones when it came to styling Kim, then would dye them to coordinate with whatever she was wearing. Dion's creative process was kind of the same for Kim's Chanel logo wig for the Manhattan File magazine cover and shoot. She dyed a blonde wig turquoise and did the cut in a hotel room. Then Kim asked her to place the logo on it. She said, I went to the arts and crafts store. I purchased some thick tracing paper and I cut out the Chanel logo and then I used a magic marker to put it on the wig. That's my secret. Gone from brunette to blonde to green to red to, you know, we've, we've covered the spectrum. I was born, raised in a ghetto. The other day I had a photo shoot. So what I had my hairstylist do is make baby blue hair and uh, I had her put the Chanel side on my hair. So that's going to be kind of one of my new signature looks. You're going to start seeing me with designer hair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's not afraid to use her hair color and do different things with it. Um, you know, just to show how she's feeling, you know. 
Years later, Beyonce used that same wig and outfit for one of her many looks for her Lil' Kim costume for Halloween in 2017. Dion created so many other iconic wigs for Kim that year, like her famous blue wet and wavy bob and the wig she wore in Max Viva Glam campaign, which also required the use of the magic sharpie in the roots. For the 2001 Source Hip Hop Music Awards, she created a two-piece split wig for Kim with her seamstress Richard Anthony Gross that was connected by a zipper. I'm saying, look Kim, the child got a zipper on her hair. So all you sisters that been losing your weave, look Kim got something for you. And everybody that got something to say, zip it up. Kim loved the wig so much that she wore it again for her In The Ear Tonight music video. A month later, Kim wore a similar one to the VMAs that was connected with lace-up panels. Kim gave Dion the space to experiment and push limits when it came to her hair, and the results were iconic and are still influential and referenced till this day. Unfortunately, due to no longer feeling happy with hairstyling and being diagnosed with endometriosis, Dion decided to quit. But Kim continued her reign as the most glamorous and stylish female rapper of the 2000s. In 2004, Kim launched a designer watch collection titled Royalty by Lil' Kim along with a clothing brand named Hollywood. But don't get it twisted, her music was also flourishing. She released five hits in a four-year span and even won a Grammy Award. Kim also did a number of movie and television appearances. But her career cooled off after serving time in prison in 2006. And you know Kim made sure she went out in style before reporting to her one-year sentence. She grew closer to designer Marc Jacobs during the trial. He styled her court looks, and her courtroom style went down in pop culture history. Marc even announced he was designing t-shirts featuring photographs of Kim. He's one of my best friends and was actually a huge supporter when I was in prison, she said in an interview with Stylist.com. He wrote me every week. I decided to buy a coloring book. I'm a huge Bratz fan. And I painted the Bratz and made them all wear Marc Jacobs and sent it to him. He blew it up and framed it. And now it's hanging in his house. So Marc Jacobs is the best, end quote. Although Lil' Kim's high profile status and luxurious fashion has taken a backseat, the aesthetic she crafted for herself is still used as a reference and has heavily influenced a new generation of public figures. Her decades-old looks continue to make their rounds across social media platforms, which shows that her influence on fashion and hip-hop is undeniable. Lil' Kim's fans have been campaigning for her to be honored with a CFDA Fashion Icon Award, and I personally agree that it's time for her to become a recipient of the prestigious award. I couldn't show a lot of her looks and outfits for the sake of keeping this video monetized, so let me know in the comments your favorite fashion moments from Lil' Kim. Like this video and subscribe to BFTV for more content.